It was uh, certainly a lot of fun out there on the slopes, I must say. So let's get started with three at three. Every business day, 3 p.m. approximately. Um, for those of you uh, who want your money back, okay. <laughs> because it's free. <laughs> it's free and it's three at three. All right, let's do this. Disclaimer says that this is for educational and informational purposes only. That John, Pete, and our coaches and mentors and educators are offering this as a opportunity to educate yourself, uh, to inform yourself, and that is it. Uh, all investments involve risk. If you would like more, then you can fully read the disclosure document. Intellectual property rights. All right. We have registered marks, trademarks, patents, and uh, copyright on virtually everything you're about to see. So before you just willy-nilly use any of it, make sure you ask us first and then cite Market Rebellion. All right, let's get it. Wells Fargo, bullish call spread. Now, if you're a newbie, you may not be aware that every option is for 100 shares of stock. So I'm reminding people that are new to this that that is the case. So when you see something like this, 25,000 options, that means 2.5 million shares of stock. All you do is put two zeros at the end of whatever the option says, and voila, 2.5 million share equivalent. Somebody pretty big wants in on Wells Fargo. So they paid $1.58 for 25,000 of those calls with the stock at 38. So as you might imagine, I am one of the guys that likes buying something closer to the money and selling something out of the money, which is what I did in this case. Now, that's not advice on how you should trade your money, but it is your money. So you need to be aware that there is uh, time decay as well as volatility compression that can affect you negatively if you just buy an option. It can also be a positive thing if you just buy an option. If you'd like to mitigate some of that, you could do what I do. For every option I buy, I sell another option one to one. That's how I address it. This is Wells Fargo, as you saw. It was 3815 when we put it up on our site. And right now it is approximately 13 cents higher. Um, a lot of turnover in the shares. It's 158 billion market cap. You know about Wells Fargo. I'm in. Microsoft, I am also already in this one. Um, and did I add to it because of this? I did throw on a few more uh, spreads because of this. We saw 15,000. So if you're new to this and you just add two zeros to that, that's 1.5 million share equivalent of Microsoft. So just to give you an idea, 1.5 million times $232 is $348 million trade. Um, if now these options aren't for, uh, these are options, not shares, but it controls that much stock. Um, 1.5 million shares of a $238, uh, $232 stock. So you get the idea that whenever you see a lot of options trading, the potential that they have to wag the dog, if you will, um, is great. So that's why we always cite, well, you know, they bought a bunch of these. They paid 71 cents for them. These options expire not this Friday, not the 26th, but they expire the following Friday, the 5th of March. So these are not regular March expiration options. These are options that expire the 5th of March. So you need to be aware of that too. It's not a regular expiration. It is a weekly expiration, but it's a pretty big bet. So for instance, 1.5 million, uh, uh, these are $71 a piece because every option is for 100 shares of stock. So for a little over a million dollars, somebody is controlling for less than two weeks, about a week and a half, a significantly higher amount of uh, dollars that it would take to own 15,000 shares of a $232 stock. So again, this is what focuses me in. I already own Microsoft. I added to the position, but I did it one to one. I bought uh, the calls that are approximately where the stock was at this time, 
and sold upside calls against it. As long as I do that one-to-one, -one, there is no additional margin. Let's take a look at where that stock is. It was 232.62, now it's 233.79. So you're already up over a dollar in the stock and the options, if you bought at the monies like I did, um, you're probably already up. If you bought out of the monies, you're probably up a little because it's only moved up a little more than a dollar. Bang, let's keep an eye on it. Third and final of our three at three is XLF. So you saw that I opened up with Wells Fargo, WFC. That's part of the um, XLF, the financial spider. Um, it is at 33.59 as of this writing. And look at that, 75,000. So this is a diverse portfolio of financial stocks. Everything from Berkshire Hathaway, JP Morgan, and of course, Wells Fargo. So 75,000 of these is 7.5 million share equivalent. That's something you want to pay attention to. Again, it's a very big trade. They paid about a buck for each option. So a buck, 75,000, which is 7.5 million, is $75 million. I mean, this is a big trade, folks, 7.5 million uh, on that. Bang, just getting another fill. So... I like to be aware of big money going into chasing into or exiting. Frequently we see puts as well, but the three examples I'm giving you today are calls and two of which are in the financial sector. All right, so let's take a look. 33.53, it was 33.59. So in other words, it's six cents cheaper right now than it was uh, just minutes ago before we went on air. Bang. You've got questions, we've got answers. Thank you for sending those questions in. I'm sorry I couldn't do them from the slopes, um, but we're gonna do it right now. At John Najarian or at three at three underscore UOA. Bang. FCX CLF. Uh, so Lil Investments and the handle there is L-I-L-N, no I, like investments, but instead it's Lil N Vestments says or asks, how do you see material plays Freeport and Cliffs, short-term to mid-term? Short-term, uh, it's been quite a run already. Long-term or mid-term, it's going higher. Both of them going higher, I believe. Um, and I am in both these trades. I am in and long uh, Freeport, which is FCX, and I am in and long Cliffs, CLF. Let's talk about covered calls. All right, this was asked by CWILBZ88. What's the best way to manage a covered call that is gapped up way above your strike in the after hours? Expiration. Roll it out and up to buy more time or let it be exercised and closed. Thanks. All right, CWILBZ88. Um, that's like a happy problem in many cases especially if you have a tax deferred or tax free account, I just let it get called out and I put on a new trade. However, if this is in a taxable account, I would not want to let it get called out most probably because um, I own probably 25%, 30% of my portfolio in stocks and the rest in options. The stocks that I own, I want to own long term, at least my idea of long term, which is three to six months, some of them forever like Apple. Microsoft. Um, but um, this does happen to us every once in a while that a stock will gap up on positive uh, catalyst. And then you have to decide, do I take profits um, and just let it get called out? If it's in tax deferred, I've already told you what I would do. I would let it get called out. If it's, on the other hand, in a taxable account, I would buy that call option back and roll it up and out. Um, so if I'm in the front month, I would probably be out there two months into the future uh, to try to mitigate as much as I could of the loss that I'm taking on the covered call, which I'm assuming is a loss um, because the stock has gapped up and it probably went into the money, that call that I'd sold. So now I need to buy that one back and roll it up and out. So if it's taxable and I don't want to own it forever, that's what I would do. All right, let's get to this one. Uh, three happy looking folks in a bar, Rich, uh, who trades under the handle King Richard 24K, 
24 karat, love that. Um, Pete, John, with dad last night, 90th birthday, making memories. Hey, Rich, that's how it's done, my friend. Um, my dad uh, passed this past year, almost hit his 93rd birthday, and your dad looks fantastic. I wish him many more uh, wonderful birthdays with you both, uh, and uh, nothing better than uh, celebrating uh, birthdays with friends and good times with friends. So congratulations, Rich. Um, I'm happy for you, my friend. Uh, enjoy. And today, coming up at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Central, is the one and only A.J. Monty and the one and only my brother Pete Nigerian. They will be coming your way at 4 p.m. Eastern today. Rapid fire stock analysis, 30 stocks in 60 minutes. And yes, AJ could probably do 30 stocks in 30 minutes. He might even be able to do 30 stocks in 15 minutes, but we won't want to push him that fast. Um, so if you'd like to join them live, please uh, go to Market Rebellion and sign up for that. 30 stocks in 60 minutes with my brother Pete and AJ. Thank you, folks. By the way, thank you for subscribing to our YouTube channel. We appreciate that. It helps us do live streams of YouTube uh, uh, content, and we certainly appreciate it. You go to YouTube, and you just type in the search bar, Market Rebellion, and then you'll get uh, the option of subscribing. It's on that far right-hand side. If you click that, bang, thank you. And then right next to it, there's a little bell. So if you'd like to know every time there's fresh con commentary from Pete with the take, from me with the 60-second, from me with the podcast or 3 at 3, that bell will let you know automatically so you won't have to remember. Gee, is it 3 o'clock already? 3 at 3. Thank you, folks. I hope you have a great day. Um, I appreciate all of you joining us. And I'll be back tomorrow on both the halftime report as well as uh, 3 at 3.